In this video, I'm going to be talking about an adiabatic process with an ideal gas. And specifically, I'm going to do a derivation of the work done. So the work done corresponds to the area under the PV diagram curve. So if you draw a curve of the adiabatic process in the PV diagram and you find the area underneath that curve, that is the work done. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an integral uh, of P as a function of V. And we're going to integrate that between the bounds of the initial volume and the final volume. But to do that, we actually need this condition. And this condition is derived in some of the videos of this playlist. So it says that PV to the power of gamma is a constant. K is a constant. So what we can actually do is initially, I'm just going to say that K is equal to P initial times V initial to the power of gamma. And it's also equal to P final times V final to the power of gamma. And gamma is the ratio of CP over CV. So this is the same. The initial and the final state, if you take this product and you raise V to the power of gamma, you will get this constant K. So we're going to keep this and we're going to use this later in the proof. Now let's write the work. The work is the area under the curve. And what's the area under the curve? Integral, right? Integration is going to give you the area under the curve. This is from single variable calculus. And if we take the integral from the initial volume to the final volume, because this is some kind of uh, ex uh, expansion or comp compression, and that's the type of work we're looking at, compression expansion work. We have to take the integral of the pressure as a function of volume dV. But how would you evaluate this integral? Well, we need something for the pressure. What's this pressure going to be? Well, we can go back to this condition. The pressure can be written, or the pressure as a function of volume is actually equal to k divided by v to the power of gamma. Right? That's what this guy is equal to. If we just divide both sides by v to the power of gamma, we get this. And what we can now do is use exponent laws, and we can say that this is actually equal to k times v to the minus gamma. That's what this is. So you go v to the minus gamma. And why does this work? Well, if you take 1 over v to the gamma, that's equal to v to the minus gamma, because it's the reciprocal. And the reciprocal uh, is going to give you a minus sign over here. So now what we can do is we can substitute this into here. So let's do that. We've got the integral of, first of all, we have v initial downstairs, and then we have v final upstairs. That, those are the bounds of integration. And then we substitute in k times v to the minus gamma. Right? I'm going to keep it like this because it's going to be easier to integrate. And we're integrating with respect to volume. That's what this is. Now let's evaluate this integral. So the work is going to be equal to, first of all, I'm going to pull this constant k out. This is going to be k times, and I'm going to evaluate the integral. We're going to use the power rule. If you have x to the power of n, then the integral of x to the power of n is x to the n plus 1, all divided by n plus 1. Right? That's what this is going to be. So what we have to do is we have to add 1 to this exponent. That's going to be v to the 1 minus gamma. And then we have to divide by whatever that exponent is, which is 1 minus gamma. And we're evaluating that from v initial to v final. That's what this is. Now I'm going to substitute this guy in. But first, I'm going to take 1 minus gamma outside the front. So we've got k on 1 minus gamma. And now we're going to substitute in the initial volume and the final volume. So we have v uh, final times, uh, to the power of 1 minus gamma minus v initial to the power of 1 minus gamma. So this is what we have. Let's have a quick look and see if we differentiate this, will we get this back? It turns out we will, because the power, the, the power rule for differentiation is actually going to tell us that we have to bring this exponent down as a coefficient, and then we're going to have 1 minus gamma, and we have to multiply by 1 over 1 minus gamma, which is in the denominator. Those guys are going to cancel, and then we have to drop this exponent down by 1, which is going to give us minus gamma. So we just end up with v to the minus gamma. So differentiating this expression gives you this guy. 
And that means that the integral of that guy is this guy, because differentiation and integration are the opposite. So we've done the definite integral. We've substituted in the bounds of uh, vf and vi. Now, what we can do is we can use this little trick that we've, we've, we've written down over here. We can set k equal to both of these guys. So when we distribute this k inside here, when it applies to vf, we can use this. And when it applies to vi, we can use this. So I'll write this out to make it more clear. The work is going to be equal to, so I'll keep this 1 on 1 minus gamma on the outside. And then when we distribute this k and apply it to here, what we're going to do is we're going to use p final times v final, and that's to the power of gamma, right? Because that's what this is. That's k. And we're going to multiply that by this guy, which is v final to the 1 minus gamma. Then we're subtracting off pi vi to the gamma times vi to the 1 minus gamma. And we're going to put that in brackets. So can you see that this guy, this guy is actually equal to k. And this guy is also equal to k. That's k and that's k. That's what we have in this condition over here. So when I distributed this k, over to each of these terms, I defined it slightly differently. I defined it in terms of the final values for the final volume and in terms of the initial values for the initial volume. Now, that's a little trick that we've actually used. Now, what we can do is we can combine these guys together. And you can see that if you multiply these two guys, the exponent law will tell you, oops, I wiped out this guy a little bit. Uh, the exponent law will tell you that the gamma and the minus gamma will just cancel each other out because there's a plus and there's a minus. And that's going to happen in both of these cases. So what we're going to end up with is the work is equal to 1 over 1 minus gamma times pf. And here we're just going to have vf, right? vf. And then we're going to subtract off pi. And we have vi. So it doesn't actually depend on any exponents. There's no gamma in the exponents. There is a gamma in the coefficient out the front, but there's no dependence on gamma in the exponent. So why does it not depend on gamma? Well, it's because the gammas actually cancel when we expand this out. One way you can write this, so I'll write this in two separate ways. The work, you can either write as pf vf minus pi vi over 1 minus gamma. Or you can equivalently uh, swap these guys around by multiplying both the top and the bottom by negative 1. And you can write this as pi vi minus pf vf and all of that over gamma minus 1. You see how these guys are both equivalent. We've just swapped the order by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by negative 1. So why would this be more convenient? Well, in this case, the denominator is positive, because this guy is actually usually going to be bigger than 1. Uh, and this guy, when you subtract off 1, will give you a positive value. So both of these guys are equivalent. This over here is an expression for the work done in an adiabatic process. Now, you could just leave it in this form over here. And what you could also do is substitute gamma in. And that's going to give you some uh, funky expressions that could involve the amount of degrees of freedom for your ideal gas. But this over here, this expression gives you the work done in an adiabatic process with an ideal gas.